Hello, my name is Nabil Ansari and I teach Spanish in the Center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the paper entitled Spanish Grammar 1. In the previous module, we have covered the verbs and expressions used for shopping, indefinite determiners, interrogative determiners, verbs which do not take any preposition and the verbs which are always followed by the prepositions, some useful expressions used in our day-to-day -day lives, words which are used to connect words, phrases or sentences, and the present continuous form in Spanish. In this module entitled Repasso 4, we are going to revise the main points covered in the previous six modules which will help you not only in a better understanding but also in remembering the relevant aspects of its usage in your communication. Let's revise different types of clothing and accessories in Spanish. La camisa which means shirt. La blusa which means blouse. Los vaqueros means jeans. El vestido means dress, la camiseta means t-shirt, los pantalones means trousers, el traje means suit, los pantalones cortos means shorts, la falda means skirt, los guantes means gloves, El cinturón means belt, los zapatos means shoes, los calcetines means socks, la corbata means tie, el reloj means watch, las sandalias means sandals, las chanclas means slippers, Las botas means boots, las gafas means glasses, el gorro means cap, el collar means necklace, el sombrero means hat, el bolso means bag, y el panuelo means handkerchief. La bufanda means scarf, el abrigo means coat, la sudadera means sweatshirt, la diadema means hairband, el anillo means ring, el pijama means pajamas, la chaqueta means jacket, El jersey or el suéter means sweater. La pulsera mean, means bracelet. And el pendiente means earring. Now after seeing the vocabulary, let's see some useful phrases that we can use while shopping. To ask for or to tell what one wishes to buy, we can use que desea or que desean, which means what do you wish for. Quería or quiero can be used as a reply to the question, which means I wanted or I want. To ask for and tell the size of the garment, the question can be used is que talla usan or if it's plural then que talla usan or de que talla which means what size do you wear or of which size you want la 36 or la s which means 36 or s is small to ask for the color of the garment which one wishes to buy the question asked 
is the k color which means of what color and then you can add the name of the thing and if it, the color is uh, red then it will be rojo and if the color is black it will be negro and likewise como me queda o que tal me queda which means how does it look on me or how does it fit me and the reply it can be te queda bien which means it looks good que te, te, te queda perfecto which means it's look it looks perfect te queda grande which means it looks big te queda estrecho o estrecha which means it looks tight te queda mal which means it's it looks bad on you to ask for and tell the preference the question can be asked which is cual prefieres which means which one do you prefer reply can be yo prefiero la roja which means i prefer the red one or el negro which means the black one prefiero el o la de algodón which means i prefer the cotton one or prefiero el or la de lana which means i prefer the wool one another question is cual te gusta or cual te gustan mas or menos so cual te gusta mas means which one do you like more and cual te gusta menos means which one do you like less and the reply can be me gusta el negro which means i like the black one me gusta el de lana which means i like the wool one me gusta el o la de piel which means i like the leather one or me gusta o me gustan los rojos which means i like the red ones now in the reply the article el la or the plural form of the definite article los las will be used depending on the number and gender of the object so if the object is masculine singular it will be el feminine singular it will be la masculine plural it will be los and feminine plural will be las now how to ask price of something the question is cuanto es which means how much is it for and the reply will vary for example if it's of 60 rupees then the reply will be son 60 rupees now likewise the the reply will vary according to the price of the object another way of asking the price is cuanto cuesta or if the object is plural then cuanto cuestan which means how much does it cost or how do they cost and if the object is for 100 rupees then the reply will be cuesta or if the object is plural then cuestan 100 rupees meaning it costs or they cost 100 rupees now let's uh, revise the parts of a shop that is partes de una tienda in any garment or clothing shop we find the following elements first one is probadores meaning changing rooms espejo means mirror perchas means hanger ganchos means hooks mostrador means counter caja means cash box ticket de compra meaning purchasing receipt sección de mujeres o sección de hombres sección de mujeres is women section sección de hombres is men section and 
sección de niños es child section. Maniquí es maniquín. Escaparate, meaning shop window. Dependiente es salesman and dependienta es saleswoman. And cajero is the cashier. Now let's uh, see the verb costar which means to cost. In, in order to ask price of anything we use the verb costar. It has got only two forms. Cuesta and cuestan. The form cuesta is used with singular noun. For example, cuánto cuesta el billete, which means how much does the ticket cost. And the reply can be cuesta 200 rupias, which means it costs 200 rupees. Another question is cuánto cuesta la camis camisa, which means how much does this shirt cost and if it costs 600 rupees then the reply will be cuesta 600 rupias which means it cost 600 rupees the form cuestan is used with plural nouns for example cuanto cuestan los pantalones which means how much do the trousers cost if it cost 1200 rupees then the reply will be cuestan mil doscientas rupias and another question is cuanto cuestan los zapatos which means how much do the shoes cost and if they cost 2300 rupees then the reply will be cuestan dos mil uh, trescientas rupias meaning they cost rupees 2300. The price can be also asked by using the verb ser or valer. For example, cuanto vale, which means what is the cost, and cuanto es, which means what is the cost. Like costar, these uh, can also be used in if the object is uh, plural. And the question will change from vale to valen and from cuanto es to cuantos son. The verbs we used for obligations are tener que plus infinitive form. Now we use this structure when we want to express an obligation or necessity that one must carry out or do. For example, tengo que estudiar para el examen, which means I have to study for the exam. Tienes que ir al médico which means you have to go to the doctor. Tenemos que comprar las entradas, which means we have to buy the tickets. Another verb used uh, for obligations is deber plus infinitive. It means should or must and we feel the obligation but it's not unavoidable. It's not a compulsion. We also use deber to give advice. For example, Debo asistir más clases, meaning I should attend more classes. Another example, mi novio debe ser puntual y fiel. For example, my boyfriend should be punctual and loyal. And last example, debes fumar menos, which means you should smoke less. Another way of uh, expressing the obligation is with the verb haber. That is I K plus infinitive. We express an impersonal and generalized obligation. It states the idea of what one must do or what is necessary to do. For example, I K estudiar para el examen, which means it is necessary to study for the exam, or one must study for the exam. I K hablar con cuidado, which means one must speak with care. Now we are going to uh, talk about indefinite adjectives. Indefinite adjectives are those adjectives that talks about things or people in a vague, general and not in a precise way. Even though in English the indefinite adjectives do not change in Spanish like other adjectives, they change for the feminine and plural 
forms. Most common indefinite adjectives are given below. Referring to indeterminate number of persons or things, the adjectives are algun, alguna, algunos, algunas and meaning some or any and we have ningun, ninguno, ningunos, ninguna and ningunas meaning no or not any. Cada means each or every. Cualquier or cualquiera means any, whatever, whichever, whoever or whomever depending on the context. And cualquiera can be used both for masculine and feminine nouns if it comes after them. Then we have mucho, mucha, muchos, muchas. Mucho, mucha means mucho, muchas means some or any or a lot. And poco, poca, pocos, pocas. Poco, poca, pocos, pocas means little or few. Otro, otra, otros, otras is another or other tanto tanta tantos tantas means so much or so many todo toda todos todas all or every demasiado demasiada demasiados demasiadas is too many or too much bastante in plural bastantes means quite enough now Let's uh, quickly revise the interrogative pronouns. An interrogative pronoun is the one which modify nouns and is used in interrogative sentences or questions. These are who, which, what, where, when, why, how much and how many. Let's see some examples in English. For example, with which which movie are we going to watch and with how many how many students are there in the class the integrative pronouns in Spanish are que means which or what cual or cuales means which donde means where cuando means when porque means why Cuanto, cuanta means how much. Cuantos, cuantas means how many. Now, after interrogative uh, pronouns, let's uh, talk about uh, the verbs with prepositions. Many Spanish verbs take a prepositional complement. The preposition is attached to the verb and is not lost when the verb is followed by an infinitive. For example, me alegro de ver a mi amigo, meaning I am glad to see my friend. For this reason, it is important to know if a verb has a prepositional complement that cannot be separated. It makes no sense to make a list of verbs that have no prepositional complement, as the majority of the verbs do not take prepositions but of those who are always attached to a preposition. Some of the verbs which takes the preposition a are acercarse a means to approach, acertar a means to manage to, acostumbrarse a which means to be or get used to, alcanzar a means to manage to, animar a means to encourage to, impulsar a means to urge to, incitar a which means to incite to, inclinar a which means to incline to. Some of the verbs which takes the preposition they are Arrepentirse a means to regret. Avergonzarse de which means to be ashamed of. Cansarse de which means to tire or get tired of. 
cuidar de means to take care or be careful to jactarse de which means to boast about lamentarse de which means to be mourn preocuparse de which means to be concerned about presumir de which means to boast uh, about so the verbs which takes the preposition n are confiar en which means to trust to dudar en which means to hesitate to persistir en which means to persist in quedar en which means to agree to tardar en which means to take a long time to or to um, delay in something some of the verbs followed by the preposition con are amenazar con cantar con basta con and casarse con some of the verbs followed by the preposition por are acabar por optar por esforzarse por luchar por and estar por and in general por means for like in english spanish has also some idiomatic expressions these are a set of words whose meaning is not derived from individual words but rather you when used together for example the meaning now the meaning of these kinds of expressions can be understood only when taken together thus when someone says tengo suerte in spanish that person doesn't mean that he has luck which will be its literal meaning but what he or she means in reality is that i am lucky so tengo suerte is i am lucky there are also other verbs which are used with prepositions these prepositions are used to express oneself not only correctly but also naturally in spanish some expressions with the verb ir are ir de vacaciones to go on vacation ir al extranjero to go abroad ir de excursión to go on excursion ir de camping to go camping ir de compras to go shopping some expressions with the verb tener are tener lugar tener celos tener razón tener la culpa tener ganaste and tener cuidado now let's uh, some expressions with dar the expressions with the verb dar are dar a luz which means to give birth dar gusto to please dar un abrazo to embrace or to hug dar la hora means to tell the time dar una mano which means to lend a hand dar asco is to disgust dar la bienvenida is to welcome and dar las gracias is to thank some expressions with the verb estar are está despejado it's clear used for weather when the weather is clear está nublado it's cloudy estar de acuerdo which means to be in agreement or to agree estar de buen humor to be in a good mood and estar de mal humor is to be in a bad mood let's talk about now let's talk about the connectors these are there are words such as and or but because etc which are used to connect two or more words or phrases or two parts of a sentence in such a way that the sentence makes sense they are used to indicate cause consequences purpose or a position these are very important words which helps you to speak complex sentences so the connectors are e which means and its function is to add words phrases or ideas o which means or they serve to exclude one of the two claims made in a sentence for example que deseas pollo o pescado what do you want chicken or fish now you should remember that u is that u is u is used instead of o when the following word begins with o or h o for example estoy en españa por siete u ocho días u because after u uh, the, the word is in o that's why or will be u and not o 
Another example is Como tengo que trazar vertical u horizontal. So again, O is used instead of uh, U is used instead of O, which means or because the next word is starting with H O. In English, we have words which are made up of two parts which connect phrases or sentences. For example, either or and neither nor. In Spanish, we have the words which express the same meaning as in English. So, for neither nor, it is ni, ni, for two times ni. For example, ni fumo, ni bebo, which means I neither smoke nor drink. For either or, it is o, o. For example, puedo tomar o cerveza o vino, which means I can drink either beer or wine. Por qué, which means because. For example, me voy en cinco minutos porque tengo que enviar un email ahora. Which means, I'm leaving in five minutes because I have to send an email now. Ya que means as. For example, mi amigo es gerente en una empresa multinacional ya que es muy inteligente. Which means, my friend is a manager in a multinational company as he is very intelligent. Pues means well. For example, quieres decir algo? Pues no sé. Which means, do you want to say something? Well. I don't know. Como is as. For example, como hoy es domingo, no tengo que ir a la oficina. Which means as today is Sunday, I don't have to go to the office. Cuando, which means when, is used, which gives an idea of time. For example, cuando estoy solo, me gusta leer las novelas. Which means when I'm alone, I like reading novels. Remember. Cuando without accent is used as a connector, but cuando with an accent means when, but it is used in asking questions, which you have already seen in the previous modules. Now uh, we are going to talk about the gerund form of the verbs. The gerund form of the verbs is made by adding ando to the stem of ar ending verb and yendo to the stem of er and ir ending verb. For example, hablar, so we remove the AR and we add ando and it will be hablando. Trabajar will be trabajando and comer will be comiendo. Beber, bebiendo. Escribir, escribiendo and vivir, viviendo. It is formed by combining the verb estar with the gerund form of the verbs. So, estar with the gerund form. For example, estoy... Estás, está, estamos, estáis, están. We use any one of these uh, forms with the jerun form of the verb. It should be, for example, estoy estudiando, meaning I'm studying, o estoy bebiendo, meaning I'm drinking, or estoy escribiendo, meaning I am writing. So, uh, same way, the jerun form of the verb will be, for the verb atraer, will be atrayendo, Caer, cayendo, contraer, contrayendo, creer, creyendo, leer, leyendo, and traer, trayendo. For some IR ending verbs, for example, construir, general form will be construyendo, contribuir, contribuyendo, excluir, excluyendo, destruir, destruyendo, huir, huyendo, incluir, Incluyendo, influir, influyendo. And for oír, it will be oyendo. Apart from this irregularity, there are some irregularities in irregular stem changing IR ending verbs. Meaning those verbs which undergo stem change from O into UE or U. Like dormir or morir. So dormir is duermo, morir is muero. Now take the U in the gerun, so it will be, it will not be duermiendo, but it will be durmiendo. Same way, morir will be muriendo. Those verbs which undergo stem change from E to IE or E, like sentir or mentir. So sentir is siento, mentir is miento, take the I in the gerun form. So 
it will be sintiendo and mintiendo those verbs the third for the third um, group of verbs are those which undergo stem change from e into i and then i in gerund form like pedir is pido seguir is sigo so gerund will be pidiendo and siguiendo now e is a verb which is irregular so if you were to treat it as a regular ir verb take away the ir you would be left with simply yendo but the gerund of e is with y that is yendo thus in this module we have revised the important points related to shopping indefinite determiners indicative determiners verbs which do not take any preposition and the verbs which are always followed by the prepositions some useful expressions used in our day to day lives words which are used to connect words phrases or sentences and the present continuous form in spanish for more you should uh, refer to the e text